In this question, we are going to graph some familiar shapes that have been dressed up in very unfamiliar clothes. And they also have some, um, some weird catches, some weird curveballs kind of built into them. So let's have a look at this question and see what sense we can make of it. Sketch the graph of the set of points Z for which Z minus one on Z minus I, this fraction here, whatever that's equal to, for which that is real or Imaginary, we're gonna get two different graphs here at these two different questions. So how do I tackle this? Well, the first thing that immediately jumps out at me is that the two parts of this question, part A, asking for it to be real, and part B, asking for it to be imaginary, um, what they suggest to me is that I'm going to need to think about this complex number Z and the result that you get from Z minus one on Z minus I, I'm gonna need to think of this in Cartesian form. And that's because, you know, I've got three forms that I, I generally um, have at my disposal and I kind of have to interpret off of the question which might be the most useful form. And sometimes it doesn't matter really which one you use, but sometimes it really does matter, right? If for example, you have a question and it's saying to you something to do with angles and there's um, multiplication and division, that's kind of a bit of a, a hint for you, especially if they're talking about arguments in a specific way, maybe I should be in polar form because the theta is right there in the cos theta plus i sine theta with an r out the front for whatever modulus you choose. Um, if you, on the other hand, see complex numbers being raised to powers, where you see exponentiation, that kind of indicates to you, well, maybe exponential form might be the most useful. Or De Marvis theorem, so you've kind of got a 50-50 there, you could use polar form as well. Now, when you have a look at the way this question is written, I wonder if you can tell what's the thing that nudges me toward using Cartesian form or rectangular form. And that is that this part of the question, here and here, requires the real and the imaginary component to be separated out very neatly from each other. And you can see, for example, when we take the uh, exponential form of a complex number, um, it's a single thing, r e to the i theta. Which part of this is the real part and which part is the imaginary part? The answer is it's kind of all intertwined, right? Um, you can more easily separate it in polar form, but you might as well go to the form that very cleanly distinguishes between here's the real part, Here's the imaginary part, uh, and that is Cartesian form. That does the best job. Uh, not only that, but in terms of sketching a graph, we are used to, we have all this knowledge built up over years about how um, to graph Cartesian equations. And so we might as well kind of use all of that knowledge to help us uh, solve this question. So um, with that in mind, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, well, let's take this complex number Z and express it in Cartesian form. So I'm just gonna say it's X plus I, Y. Now, if that is the case, then I can rewrite the question that's been provided to me, this fraction here. I can rewrite it in terms of this X plus I, Y stuff, uh, and that will help me uh, form a bridge to getting parts A and B. So therefore, Z minus one, on z minus i is going to be equal to, just gonna do a straight substitution first. It's x plus i y minus one, and then x plus i y minus i. Now, the whole point in choosing Cartesian form is so that I can cleanly separate out the real and the imaginary components. But this complex number here, whatever this whole thing is equal to, um, you can see the, the components are not neatly separated. They're kind of mixed together in the numerator and the denominator and intertwined. So in order to sort of separate them out more cleanly, uh, what I need to do is go back to the very beginning of the course something we've been doing for a long time here, which is to multiply this fraction by the conjugate of the denominator, because then I can use difference of squares, I can realize the denominator, and then I can start separating things out. So let's have a go at that. Uh, what is the conjugate of x plus i, y minus i? Well, in fact, before I multiply, it might be better or more helpful to me if I start to um, begin this process of separating out real and imaginary. So on the numerator, I've got x minus one, that's real. And then I've got i, y, that's imaginary. And then on the denominator, that is a really wonky line there, I'm gonna have my x, that's the only real component. And then everything that has an i attached to it is going to be the imaginary component. And you can see if I factorize that out, I get y minus one. Now this makes it much easier for me to identify what the conjugate should be, because when you take this term here, all you need to do is take that uh, plus i, y minus one, and turn it into a minus i, y minus one. So that is the conjugate. It goes up the top and the bottom so that you're not actually changing the fraction. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna multiply through and hopefully if I've done this right, I will be able to get a real denominator and then I can separate my real and imaginary components on the numerator. 
All right, let's have a go. So uh, on the top here, I'm gonna have, I'm gonna do x minus one multiplied by each of these terms first. So what do I get? I'm gonna have x, x minus one, and then I'm going to get minus i, x minus one, y minus one. So I hope you can see that's come from me combining x minus one with this final term over here. Just watch out for the sign and the i that's hanging around. So far so good. Uh, let me now distribute this i, y across to these other terms. So that gives me, in the first instance, oopsie daisy, um, plus i, x, y. And then, be careful here, I've got a minus, but then I have an i squared. There's one i here, and then there's another i there. And then that leaves me with y, y minus one. So there's some nice symmetry with some of those earlier terms as well. Okay, let's draw a bar, nice big fraction line, and then what's happening on the denominator? Well, it's this difference of squares, things we were talking about before, right? So I've got x squared, and then I subtract i squared y minus 1 squared. And that's it, that's already been factorized according to difference of squares. All right, uh, can we tidy this up a little bit? We certainly can. So I notice that there's a real number there. Uh, this is going to become a real number once I deal with the minus i squared. Uh, and then what you've got left in the middle here, as we so often see, is the imaginary component, because you can see the i can factorize out in both cases. So what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm going to separate them out. Um, I get that x, x minus one, that's out the front. And then this becomes minus i squared is plus one. So that will be plus y, y minus one. That looks good. Um, and then as I move across to um, the right, you can see I'm going to factorize out i, and that leaves me with, let's have a look at what's inside the brackets. I've got x, y, take away x minus one, y minus one. There we go, have a look, did I do that right? So I've just uh, popped this term out the front because it's positive, and then this term with the minus sign comes into the back here. Um, and then on the denominator, you can see I can also tidy that up just a little bit. I can do that same minus i squared um, cancellation, so that just gives me plus uh, y minus one all squared. Okay, so that's looking good. I can go a little bit further than that though because this is still a bit of a complicated mess. Um, what I can do, for instance, is I can say, well, um, on the left-hand side, I can actually expand this all out, right? I get x squared minus x plus y squared minus y. Um, and then while I'm at it, I might as well uh, separate this out as its own fraction because this is all the real components. There are no more imaginary bits. So the denominator comes along for the right. x squared plus y minus one squared as we saw in the previous line. And then what do I get here? Well, I add, I'm gonna factorize out the i. What do I get on the numerator? Well, let's look at this carefully. So I've got the x, y hanging out the front there. And then I'm gonna subtract now I've got to expand this uh, pair of binomials. So it looks to me like I get x, y minus x minus y plus one. And that, that is all divided by the same denominator that I saw before. So draw that fraction there, um, x squared plus y minus one all squared. Okay, I'm almost there. <laughs> this is me, uh, you know, taking, taking this, and uh, I've got the real component. I'm happy with how that's been simplified. And then over here with the imaginary component, um, you can see that my xy's, I'll use purple, my xy's are gonna cancel, and that just leaves the rest of these terms, but you gotta watch out for that negative sign that's gonna distribute to everything in there. So let's go ahead and write that out. xy's are gone, that leaves me with x plus y minus one. And that is gonna be divided by the same denominator that we saw earlier x squared plus y minus one, all squared. Okay, happy times. Now, I've got the all this working was just so that I could separate out the real part from the imaginary part. Because remember, if something is going to be real, then the condition for that is that, I'll use the same colors, the imaginary part here is gonna have to be zero, right? In fact, it's not the imaginary part of z, it's actually the imaginary part of uh, this whole awkward fraction here, right? So it's actually going to be uh, z minus one on z minus i. If, if that imaginary component there is zero, then I should get a real number. Um, by the same token, but using the opposite logic, if my real component of z minus one on z minus i, if that real component is zero, then in theory, that should only leave an imaginary part. So this is gonna be my uh, framework work my pathway into solving part A and part B.
But as you're about to see, you still need to be careful. So let's start to write our working, right? 